Shalom, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back with Brother Steve e within the work coming out the city of Detroit. I hope you all doing well this evening. Bless you, bless your families, your children, and your households. First of all, I want to give all glory and praise to the Most High God of Israel, Ahia, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank every single one of you for supporting this work supporting this ministry and allowing me an opportunity to come to you. Family, I want to answer to an email uh, that I received. Um, let me roll this one up real quick here. Um, and that email, well, brother, you know who you are. I don't want to give your name out, but you know who you are. The question, the, the question in his email, uh, in, in terms of what he asked me was, what initiated this ministry? You know what's what what propelled me forward to to do this well i like to answer to that you know brother you know who you are family and those that, that will run across this video well the answer is is pretty simple for me um i had made a decision i made a decision a long time ago to serve the Most High God in Christ. I had made a decision and a conscious effort because I want to change. Some of you have asked me and I've received emails uh, why I do what I do. And you also, brother, asked me the same question, which is what I want to answer to. I basically want to give you a scripture. Why does Brother Stevie do this? I do this because I love you. I do this because I love the Most High God, my Father. I do this because I'm dedicated in faith to our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Christ Jesus. I do this because I've been called as a watchman. I've been called as a pastor. I've been called as a teacher. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes family, uh, you know, we encounter people along our walks that, uh, once again, you know, when you're meeting people out here and strangers, uh, a, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of times they have questions. Um, uh, some are, are amazed, uh, because, Especially in this climate, this spiritual climate right now, uh, you know, the climate itself is very, very dark. It's spiritually dark. And, you know, when you when you walk in with Christ and have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will walk, those who are in a place, uh, in a place of turmoil, if you will, a place of uh, indecisiveness in terms of of whether they should serve God or forget about God. Well, I can honestly tell you I've, I've encountered so many, so, so, so many people like that. Um, some admire, some admire your, your, your boldness. Um, some admire, you know, your 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 in-depth knowledge, but they don't understand that uh, what when they meet you for the first time, uh, it's they think you've always been that way, and they couldn't be any further from the truth. So, brother, I want to tell you this was a process for me, and you have to understand that in times past, I've made mistakes and fallen. I've made many mistakes. I've fallen short. I've missed a mark. And I'm still striving and I'm still enduring. But I've made a decision, a decision to be obedient. It was an indiv individual decision for me. Why? Because I love you. I love those out there. And because I'm doing my best to operate with the mindset of Christ, the heart of Christ. 
I've decided to serve him. It's really that simple. So for me, brothers and sisters, my brother out there that they asked the question, what was the catalyst? What was the fire? What initiated me to, to, to really do this? You know, I'm going to take you to, to uh, Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm going to take you to Ezekiel chapter 3. <clears throat> hey, brother, this, this was my catalyst, if you will. I remember sitting at, at the table some years back. Kind of, you know, when... when uh, and I was in, a, I was in a, a very, very heavy, 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 heavy season. And I sat at that table, not knowing which way my life was going to go, what I was going to do, you know, how I was going to move forward. And then I came across this scripture that I'm about to read you now, and it states, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. It states here, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. You see, brother, Ezekiel was called as a prophet. He was called as a prophet, as a mouthpiece for the Most High God, directly to the heavenly realm to warn the children of Yahshua or Yehuda or Yahshuael or Yeshuron. You see, the nation of Israel has many different names. We go by many different names. So for me, brother, it was this right here. And I sat there and I thought about the condition of our people. I thought about I, I thought about what the most high showed me at the age of twelve. The hours spent in those libraries. Twelve years of age, brother. The most I was revealing things about my identity and me, who Christ was. And I was in awe. But my, my season was not yet. So I had to go through life. I had to acquire the knowledge of this world. And in that process, brother, I failed at many different things. I'm not saying everything was a complete failure. I mean, I had worldly success. I got worldly accolades and worldly credentials and education and all that stuff, brother, but I was still incomplete. The Most High still was working on me. He was ordering my steps aright. And I didn't know it then. Which is why you had me in front of you today. Just like Ezekiel was called in his generation, in his time as a watchman. I believe I was called as a watchman in this hour. A pastor, a teacher. And that required for me to be purged, pruned. A process of sanctification. You see, Brother Steve had to learn from many. I had to ask questions. And I had to humble myself. And I had to put in work. And that work still continues now. Listen, verse 18. When I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning. Nor speakest to warn him. Forgive me. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. To save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast deliverest thy soul so brother family and those that have run across this video I had made a decision to learn and immerse myself in the word and at that point I had not count the cost 
All I know that there was something invisible, a, manifesta a manifestation, a spiritual manifestation that was, that was growing in me, a hunger, if you will, a hunger to, to learn the word of the Most High God in Christ. And part of that was, was reflecting on my past, my errors, my defective thinking. You understand what I'm saying? This was all part of the process. It was a process that I couldn't rush. See, I wanted it all. I wanted the most high to pour out on me in a season. I didn't have patience. And because I didn't understand that then, the most high had to send me on an assignment, a mission. So what I did, brother, was I had to apply everything that I was learning, studying, and I sat it and I and I ate this word. I immersed myself in the word. And I put this to a test. But be it as it may, something was growing in me. I wanted to I wanted to see what it was like to serve Christ in my time, in my generation, in this dispensation. I wanted to understand what it was like to be a follower of Christ. Not according to religion. And in order for me to have to experience that, the most high had to send me through trials, tests. Adversity. It was the only way. And not even that, brother, family. I would then begin that at that time to see that the Most High was with me the whole time. I began to see his supernatural work in my life. See, when people talk about the salvation of the Savior, Yeshua Christ Jesus. We don't really know what that thing looks like until something actually happens. Until you experience an experience that pushes you to the brink of death. You don't know what that's like until you're able to actually witness Visually, that something happened to you where you were saved that you couldn't articulate or explain until it happened. A spiritual phenomenon. So as a watchman, my brother, All the information and knowledge that I've, I've gotten out this world, I've taken it and harnessed it for this ministry and this work. So I labor for the most high God, Christ and his people. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first and everything else will be added unto you. So I had to exercise that. I had to implement the promises. So many brother and sisters. And my brother, since you asked me the question, this was my catalyst. I wanted to be bold. I wanted to be on fire. I made a decision, my brother, to stand up and speak. Many people are scared to speak in this hour. I'm not one of them. And because of that, my brother, I've lost a lot of different things, but I ain't lost really nothing. I've gained. I've gained, my brother. See, people think of gaining as just physical possessions, tangible things. It's not always that case. 
I'm not saying that that's not part of it, but it ain't always that case. See, you go through a metamorphosis and a change. You start understanding that the more the most high pours out on you through the Holy Spirit, but what? Your knowledge increases, your perceptions, uh, uh, your spiritual perception and discernment increases. And then you start to slowly separate from the world. You pull it out and you pull it back. That's the process every true, real believer can testify to. So when you talk about the body of Christ, one body of Christ, many members. And each member having a specific gift that the Most High has blessed them with and enhanced them with. Talents. Some one, some two, some three, some four talents. You understand what I'm saying, my brother? So this thing caused me to be bold. Like Ezekiel. And as a watchman, my job is to warn, exhort, teach, emphasize. Why? Because I love you. Because I love the Most High God and His commandments. And I believe in the faith in my Lord and Savior, Yeshua Christ Jesus, that He shed His blood for me. For me and for you. All y'all. And when you consider the excruciating death he suffered on that cross, that whole process of being humiliated, beat, sped on, being given vinegar. And that doesn't even entail the half. How much more should we be given to the Most High God in Christ? He understands that we're imper imp 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 imperfect beings and creatures. He understands this already. But yet he called me. And I couldn't see this coming. So I do this out of love. I do this out of love. I don't wish no man perish. I don't wish no evil on nobody. And because the most high God has given me understanding of this word to the best of my ability, I share it with y'all. I come on, I come on you too. Why? Because I love you. I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. But there are so many out there just like Paul. That's going to hate me because I'm telling this truth. It doesn't matter. People are going to come against you. They're going to call you Satan. They're going to think you're crazy. It does not matter. Because at the end of the day, you're accountable for what you do on this side. That should be the focus. Seek ye what? The kingdom of heaven and everything will be added on to you. I ask that the Most High God make my, make my head, my mind, 
like flint, stone, to be bold. To use my talents and gift for y'all. Anybody that will receive this. Just to save a life. Just to bring souls to Christ. In my capacity. As a servant. A servant. So whatever Christ went through. Whatever the apostles went through. The prophets. You out there as a servant also are the experience the same that's the cost that's the cost of picking up your cross many crosses thorns in the flesh plural Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. Revelations 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. My brother, check this out. Family, check this out. Here go. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, and it states, And here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High God, a higher power, and the faith of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Savior, Jesus Christ. The patience, brother, the patience of the saints, stated here in Revelation 14, Verse 13 states, and I had heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, save the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. My brother, family, blessed are those that die in Christ. See, the saints in this hour are in need of patience. That's why the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work. How do you get the patience? The patience in a perfect work comes from the Wawak Holy Spirit. See, it's something that you got to ask for. Because in this work, the race is not for the swift. It's a walk. One must be patient. See, it's development. It's a grind. You always don't feel good doing this. The amount of persecution one goes through. Every believer that has gone through the purging and pruning process can testify to what I'm saying. You die to yourself. You go in places that you've never been. You meet people that you've never met. You encounter things that you don't see coming. So you walk by faith. And the most high commands that we walk by faith, not by sight, especially in this work. When he puts you on a mission and gives you your individual and personal assignment, because we all have assignment. So in this season, in this time, in this dispensation, I'm here on YouTube. I've met many people. Brother Steve enjoys the collaborations. I enjoy being with you guys. Encouraging y'all. I, I enjoy this. I get joy out of this. Because I love you. 
It's really that simple, my brother. Ezekiel chapter three was my awake was my awakening to teach the children of slaves and also the Gentile nations one kingdom one body of Christ many members and as an Israelite a Hebrew and a Jew I'm commanded to follow Christ the most high is no respect your person This is the mission of the Negro, Jew, Hebrew, Israelite, that we wake up the nations in love, in truth. This was the doctrine of Christ, whom they killed, whom they hung on a tree, whom they crucified, whom his own people turned against. Brother, this is why I do this. This is why I sacrifice and I labor. Because I am a servant. I do this out of love. You know, I hope I was able to address your question. I didn't really want to make this a very, very long, long video. But I just wanted to uh, give you some level of understanding of why I do what I do. And I'm so very honored and privileged that the Most High selected me. Because, brother family there are times where I feel like I'm not even deserving of this and I don't want to waste this opportunity I get joy and love out of coming to you guys I am truly thankful I'm truly truly thankful that the most high has, has, has kept me that he saved my life where else would I be so I pray and, and hope that gives you some level of understanding of of what initiated, what was my catalyst in coming to, to this work, this truth. And I have so much more to share, God willing. All right. All right. Well, family, I appreciate every single one of you uh, joining me for another video. I am truly, truly honored. I want to thank you for the support and, and, and love and, and all the emails. Uh, I, I, I'm truly thankful and honored. Family, um, may the Most High God, Ahaya, Asho, Ahaya, Bashem, Yeshaya, Wawakadesh, and Christ cover you. May a wall of fire be around you, your family, your children, and your households. May the spirit of peace and rest go ahead of you as you travel to and fro in this wicked and evil earth. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshaya, Christ. Jesus. Well, family, you know what time it is. This is Brother Steve E. Within the Work, coming out the city of Detroit. I bid you all uh, a farewell. Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Y'all stay up. Have a good night. Love y'all. Take care, family.